When it comes to EVE Online, every player wants to know the most effective tactic available. You want to know the meta. The meta controls everything. It determines what will and will not happen. Knowing the meta will alter your views, make you question your reality. It might even make you laugh. And now, you're part of it. You're watching The Meta Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Meta Show. Today is Saturday, March the 12th, 2022. We have an action-packed show for you today, and probably one of the more impactful shows I think we're going to probably do on the Meta Show, because we're talking about some very important things that are very important to the future of the company, to the future of the game, to the future of all of us as players, and conversations that need to be had because there's a lot of bad shit going down in EVE right now. Now, there's someone missing on the show today. Who is it? Oh, yeah, Mittens. And Matani is moving, everybody. So for the next couple of weeks, we're, we're going to be matani list and we may actually be meta show list because of the move. So just keep that in mind. But for now, we have with us today two of the most erudite, most well-spoken, most interesting, most amazing co-hosts that the meta show has ever seen, Merkel Chen and Anominate. Gentlemen, welcome. How are you? Doing good, buddy. Thanks for having us. DC, thanks for those gift subs, broski. Appreciate it, man. Nam, how are you? Yep, doing pretty good. All right. We're going to cut to the chase because we've got a lot of material to cover this week. And there's been a lot of player angst, a lot of player anger, a lot of player conversation. And we want to get that to it right away. So this is our top story. One step forward, two steps back. So, Brisk, why do you call it one step forward, two steps back? Because that is what CCP has done this week. For the last two years, we have labored under the scarcity regime. We have labored under a situation where the player base had been told we must accept years worth of nerfs to the game that we like. All the stuff that we wanted, all the things we enjoyed doing needs to stop because you're damaging the game. We need to fix it and make it better. We need to change industry completely. We need to change mining. We need to reduce the amount of, of minerals that rock walls can, 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 can mine and the amount of, of, of isk that hells and nixes and super carriers and titans can generate. We need to do all of this stuff to make the game better. And in the meantime, all the stuff that players ask for, that gets put on hold. Until this week. What happened this week, Mark? Brisk, we had a biblical bed shitting for lack of a better word um totally screwing the fucking pooch you had a situation where ccp after two hours or two years of wallowing in their own filth with what i've never the most hostile the player base has ever been they got one little tiny baby ant dick molecule of goodwill and then they promptly totally fucked it up and set us back stone age type setback we're talking about brisk that is correct so on tuesday we got a patch one of the biggest patches that we've seen in recent eve history i'm showing you on the screen some of the slides from the patch all the different stuff we got Multiple, multiple, multi-year re player request features added to the game. We got compression for moon mining. We got it done the right way. Right-click compression, instant compression. We've got remote compression through boosts so that you do not have to be hiding next to a rock wall and dumping ore into their, into their fleet hangar and then moving it and compressing it and moving it back. You can do it in your own ship. We got a reverse of the surgical strike nerfs. Half of it, at least, better than nothing, but half of it. We got buffs to battleships 
in addition to the rollback of the surgical strike nerfs, which is now creating the possibility that you're going to see battleship fleets like the Abaddon fleet I was on earlier today out in space far more often. We got changes to a bunch of different ships. We've got all kinds of new things that the players ask for. Long-term fixes like the high sec gantry issue for Pocos. We've been begging them to work on for years. All of this got done Tuesday. Now, you would expect, would you not, that after finally giving the players what they've been asking for, and then you couple that with the announcement of a statement that CCP stands with the players in Ukraine and will be donating through a Plex for Good campaign up to, and I'm matching up to, $250,000 worth of payments that players make to donate towards Ukraine, that they would be matching that, you would think that there would be goodwill oozing all over the place for the company. And it did for maybe a day. Now, granted, the patch wasn't perfect, was it, Nam? Um, patch was kind of a mess, um, but uh, that's par for the course these days. Every every patch is, for the last couple of years has been fucked up in one way or another. And despite the fact that, like, it's not like these were just bugs sneaking through. These are things that people are spotting well ahead of time, reporting, and CCP is just releasing them anyways. So what what happened? So a number of things happened with the patch that that didn't make it through QA. So one, the most important thing, despite the fact that the CSM and 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 people had been asking uh, on CC and elsewhere, when are you going to seed the new compression skill books on the server? Are you going to seed them early? Are you going to seed them now? Which are you going to seed them last week? Are you going to seed them right away? Are they going to be available to buy off of the skill queue at launch? None of the books were seeded, and you couldn't get them off the skill queue. That was fixed two days later. Two days later, after the patch launch launched. That was a big oops. In addition, there are still some types of minerals where compression is not working. You compress them, and they are the same size as they were before. And they are slowly working through that list to make sure that all of that stuff is fixed. And I expect that it will be. But it should have been done before the launch. And they even did something even funnier where they broke using the enter key to complete a buy order or a sale in the industry window. You want to you put your money in and then you hit enter and that's supposed to do the sale and you hit enter and nothing happened. They fixed that too. But little bugs, little bugs. And and frankly, little bugs like that if not for what they did next would not have bothered I think many of us. We kind of have gotten as Namnon said to expect them. It's expected. You know, especially in a patch of this size, they're going to miss stuff. But what they did next was uh, was just to me one of the, the the biggest betrayals to the player base in a long time. And I know I sound hyperbolic when I say that, but we're going to go into detail as to why this is such a big deal. So what did they announce Thursday morning? They put out a post with all of the new stuff in it, the Prospector's Path, talking about all the different things that they were doing to announce, to add to the compression update, to, to highlight it and play it up. There is daily challenges, daily login rewards. They're gonna do a, a proving grounds and new store packs. In the new store pack, new players who would like to turbocharge their career can also take advantage of a new prospector pack containing a fully fitted flight ready retriever. The necessary skills and modules to pilot it as well as 30 days of Omega. It's the perfect starter kit for any prospective mining tycoon. And if you go to the pack, it tells you exactly what's in it. There it is. I'll pull the, the, that part of it up there. $24 for this pack. Get a fully fit retriever. Fully fit retriever. Plex, the skills to fly it, and 30 days of Omega time. And they make it clear over and over again, this is ready to fly. Was it ready to fly? No. No. Well, what do you mean it wasn't ready to fly? Well, well how could it not be ready to fly? It's fully fit, but it is terribly fit. 
Like it is not a usable fit um, at the very least. Like it does require, um, you know, at least moving around the strip miner. So you're not running an ice harvester and a strip miner, uh, but it comes with the other one. So, and you know, a new player when once they figure that out can fix it. But I mean, the rest of the fit is just garbage. Also, this thing is gank bait. And for the so record, these, I would these like four to new players who are buying this, they're going to go out into the belts and they are flying the one of the easiest to gank ships in the game that people will be able to ship scan and see, ooh, this person paid real money for this one. Correct. And for the record, just before you guys ask, I have it on good authority that Pro God Legend had nothing to do with this <laughs> pack, even though there are no rigs on it. But again, CCP is not advertising a starter ship or a ship that's half fit or or that's 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 uh, somehow not flyable they're saying this is fully fit and they're saying that it is flight ready and it is obviously not at least not up to the snuff of your average miner in high sec or anywhere else for that matter but that's that's a little bit of of us getting ahead of ourselves complaining about the fact that the pack is not that great but I want to go into the into more detail. First of all, one, okay? This is the first time in the history of EVE Online where they are selling a fully fitted ship for cash to players. Ever. This is not okay. Why is this not okay, Briss? Well, let's talk about it. What do you guys consider to be some of the fundamental things about EVE Online? What makes this game unique? Mark, what, what, off the top of your head, what, would you, what makes this game unique? The most unique thing about EVE Online is that it's a game where the player base begs the developer, CCP, stay the fuck out of our way, make a good space game, and we will handle the rest. That sandbox part is what makes it an amazing little and getting smaller game, Brisk. Now, now, what would you consider to be something that makes EVE Online unique? Well, it's the, the economy is driven by the players. Every ship you see in space, with a couple of exceptions, was built by a player. And the exceptions are things like... Um, uh, basically either like holiday gifts or um, like NPC rewards. And they're usually even a worse deal than the building the ship yourself. But basically every ship you see in space, somebody had to go and collect the resources for that. Or no, that's true. For every ship in space, somebody had to go and collect the resources for that, build the ship, and like there's ships are not appearing out of nowhere. So if, if you blow up a thousand uh, retrievers, a thousand retrievers have to be built to replace that. Now, one of the things that I find frustrating beyond belief is when I started playing this game, there were a number of things that CCP said. These are the critical things that are make this game different. Things like we're on one server. It's a single shard. Everybody's in the same server. We're all in the same place. The players write the stories. You can control space. You can create stories. You can scam people. You can do anything you can do in real life. We, we've made it possible in EVE. And then there's always, as Mom and Merck both alluded to, the player-driven economy. The things that you see players had to make. You don't go to a vendor and buy a ship. You go to a marketplace where another player who has built a ship using minerals that were mined by other players, using... BPC uh, blueprints that were bought and paid for and researched and 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 invented on by players. They build those ships. They create those markets. The prices of goods in EVE Online is set by the players for the most part. That's what makes the game unique. It's not like any other game. There are some games out there now that try to recreate that. New World tries to recreate that. Albion Online tries to recreate that. But EVE's economy is 19 years old. People have written books doctoral theses, articles galore about the in-game economy of MMOs, and they always talk about EVE Online because ours is so unique. So what does this do? What is What are we seeing here? For the first time, the company 
is saying, you don't have to buy a ship from another player. We'll sell you the ship for 25 bucks. Put that in, in perspective, okay? How can we call this game a player-run economy now when the government, for lack of a better term, has entered the marketplace and is selling their own ships to you wherever you are for real-life cash and undercutting the market of the players that are in the game? Now, that might not seem like a big deal to people, but it is a big deal because this is the first time that they've done it. Now, myself... Merkel Chen, and I'm going to serve on the Council of Stellar Management. This is the 10-person the player council elected by players to go to CCP, to serve as player advocates, to serve as feedback uh, tools, to be a focus group, to go over and, and talk to them and represent what players think about different things. Nam, how many CSMs have you been on now? Shit. What's, what year is it? Um, uh, my first one was CSM 11, so... I'll leave it to somebody else to do the math. There we go. So six. Mark, how many have you been on? Four. I've been on three. In the time that I have served on the CSM, and these gentlemen have served on the CSM, we have had thousands of conversations at a minimum with developers in groups, in single settings, formally at summits, informally on Slack, back channel conversations, phone calls, video calls, whatever you want to call it, about monetization in EVE Online. How can the company make money? Well, prior to 2015, they made money. Well, prior to 2011, they made money through subscriptions. After 2011, which was the start of the first summer of rage when everyone was concerned about runaway monetization in the game, they made money by selling cosmetics as well as selling subscriptions. Fast forward to 2015, they make money selling subscriptions and cosmetics, and then they introduce skill injectors, and they sell the skill extractors that players use to extract skill points so that they can sell them to other players. And they made a pledge that they would never directly sell skill points to players. Fast forward to 2022, how does Eve make money? There's a number of monetization schemes that they use. They still sell cosmetics. People are fine with this. They still sell skill extractors. People are fine with this. Then they begin introducing new player packs that include things like expert systems that are new, temporary skills that can be applied for a low load, $2.99 or $1.99 for a new player. They still sell Plex, obviously. That was, I should have mentioned that before. That was the other number one thing that they, they did. They sold Plex either in the form of player time uh, in the game, the old player cards, or the single Plex that were, each Plex was worth 30 days of game time. They changed that in 2015 when it went free to play, or 2016, I believe, and they turned Plex into a single unit, but you needed 500 of those to equal what the old single Plex was. And I think most of the scams of trying to sell the old sing one single plex now for the old price are pretty much gone because nobody remembers that except old timers like the three of us. But they started selling skill points directly to players in packs, including in packs for lapped veterans who are gone for multiple years. You spend $250 and we'll give you a 3 million skill points so that you can make up the time that you weren't in the game. That was not popular, was it? Nothing says uh, come back to my come back to this game that you left because we were fucking it up by saying, hey, give us a huge pile of cash and come back. <laughs> and it's frustrating, you know, that as time goes on and as monetization around the country and around the world becomes more and more accepted, it made little little little. I don't think it surprised anybody to see CCP moving in that direction to monetize more and more of the game, right? We expected that. But every single time the CSM was asked, what's good monetization, what's bad monetization, where the lines can be drawn. I remember distinctly on CSM 13, us having a meeting where we had little post-it notes and put things that were good and things that were bad and what was okay and what was not okay. And invariably, invariably, on the bad list was selling fitted ships for cash, period. It's not okay. 
and it's not okay for a variety of reasons we'll get into, but it's not okay. And we've told them that, and this has been a consistent thing for years. Mark, have you ever heard anybody say they want, they think selling a fitted ship is all right until now? I've heard really, really fucking stupid people that don't have the wherewithal to understand how awful their opinion is. I won't mention them by name because it's fucking useless to do so. I've, I've heard people like that say it, but when someone says something like that, they're just telling you, I don't know enough to understand why this is a take. I'm just in opposition to your position. So it's super important to remember the timeline here, kids. This will come up again during the course of this show. Okay, we're going to do the skill injectors thing. They probably made a boatload of money off that one, right? But we're going to keep it clean because every single skill point that ever goes in an extractor becoming an injector will come from the head of a player, right? Oh, wait until it doesn't. We'll never give away, we will never sell fitted ships. There was some little like newbie destroyer pack that slipped through the cracks a year or two ago, I forget. People freaked the fuck out. They were like, but at the same time, they're like, come on, it's a thrasher. It costs, you know, 800,000 isk or whatever the hell it is. Not the biggest deal in the world. We thought it was a huge deal. We bitched about it because we knew what was coming, baby. So now you're talking about a retriever, right? You're talking about like a fit mining barge ready to roll. Imagine if you had gone through all the steps to be the kind of person in EVE Online that built those things, right? Would you not feel a little bit betrayed because you spent a boatload of cash, a boatload of time, and a boatload of effort getting into that game only for CCP to be like, you know what? We're going to start shitting these things out. And I've seen a couple people in chat already today say, what's the difference? You dumb motherfucker. The difference is in the first scenario, a player builds the goddamn ship and the economy maintains its closed loop status. The sanctity of the economy is withheld, uh, is held up, right? In the second one, poof, a ship comes into existence. That's very, very different. And if you don't think it's a big deal, pay attention. Because I'm calling it the coffin nail in this whole fucking thing. Go ahead, Brisk. If you let yeah, me talk the, too long, so I'm no, not you stopping. talk. The, uh, like, it's ahead, easy Mark. to it's I'm easy on. to see the uh, like the destroyer frigate giveaway and think, okay, well, not a big deal. But if you want to build a retriever, that's a 1.7 billion isk BPO that you either have to spend 500 extra million to buy it in Jita or haul it through some of the most dangerous space in the game. Then you get the privilege of spending months researching it. Then you get to spend, um, well, hopefully you're doing it at the same time, but months of skill training to get your industry skills to the point where you can profitably build these things. And that's a huge investment just to be able to profitably build and sell a retriever. And now CCP is in here competing with you. And like, that's, you can't compete with free. <laughs> Bingo. So the biggest issue, the biggest concern among many of the concerns that we have is simply this. This is precedent setting, okay? And the reason why we're hitting back as hard as we have been, and I'll go into that in, in a little in a moment here, is because if we do not take a stand now and say, no, this is not okay, the community rejects this kind of monetization, then you can guarantee that they're going to do it again. And next week, maybe not next week, next month, maybe not next month, maybe six months, maybe a year from now, we'll see a cruiser pack for new players. Or, hey, you want to get into you want to get into these big null sec fights immediately? Why not a carrier pack? Why not a dread pack? Why not a Titan pack? We've already got the CCP apologists in the Eve media saying that it's okay well, go ahead and sell Titans. Who cares? Well, most of the players care, and the people that build the Titans and the people that own Titans care. And the idea that because Plex is available in the game and you can buy Plex for real-life money and you can sell Plex for ISK in the game and then you can buy a Retriever with it, that that somehow makes this okay ignores the fact that the ISK that was generated by the person who bought the Plex from you when you're selling it, was generated by players in the game doing stuff in the game. Again, this is poofing things into existence. All of the other monetization systems are locked in such a way 
that they are not breaking to the economy. This one is not. It's not. So I think that, I think that might be the most offensive part of the whole thing here is that they're not getting anything new by doing this. They are they're fucking with the sandbox, they're breaking the player economy, but the new player who buys this pack could buy the could spend the same amount of money on Plex, buy the ship, sell the Plex in game, buy the ship off the market and get the same endpoint without there being any problem at all. Correct. And to the point in chat, this is exactly the point that we're trying to make. Where does the, if, if the line is not here, where's the line? Is the line gold ammo? Well, does it even have to be gold ammo? Maybe it's just ammo. What if they start selling minerals for cash? What if they start selling ammo for cash? What if they start selling other things that are player built? Officer modules for cash. Blue loot for cash. I mean, selling the things that we go out and generate in space because it might be easier for a new player to hop into the game faster. We're gonna run fast, we're gonna learn fast. We're gonna go and do everything fast by just handing people stuff. That's not, that's not the way to do it. And, and, and I think it's frustrating to me that this is the route that they're chosen, choosing to go. And it's also frustrating, I think, to a lot of the players, which is why I think the CSM did something that was also unprecedented for it. I think this was the second open letter that was ever written by CSM members to the company since the last time this monetization stuff hit, if I recall correctly. But that's what we did. So let me show you this. So on Thursday afternoon, the players, uh, 29... CSM, former and current CSM members, including nine of the 10 current CSM members, Shocker. signed on to a letter that was sent to CCP, an open letter explaining all the concerns that we had with it. There is nothing about this list that should surprise anyone. It includes myself, Merck and Anam, obviously, it includes, other than Anam at the other single longest serving CSM member, Steve Renukin. It includes folks from both sides of the political aisle, if you want to call Pappy or, or, or NC Dot or PanFam, uh, the other side of the political aisle. It includes the Mitanni. It includes multiple CSM members dating back to CSM 4 in 2009. It even includes Celine, also known as CCC Abather, who was a CCP employee. And as of right now, this post on the EVE Online forums has 318 likes. It has. Let me get back up here to the general discussion. 7,600 page views on Reddit. It is one of the top... It's in the top 10 posts this year on Reddit, 1,327 upvotes. If you open this up and take a look at it, you have 96% upvoted here, which is if anybody pays attention on Reddit, and I'm not suggesting that you do that, but if you do pay attention on Reddit, this is unprecedented. No, you don't get 96% if this is controversial. If people don't like it, if it's propaganda, if it's something like that, even the funniest stuff that gets upvoted does not get 96%. Hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of comments. I'll even go farther than that. I will show you my Twitter statistics. So on Twitter, we put this post out. Seven thousand forty-two impressions, seven hundred and ninety-five engagements on this, which is pretty significant for any kind of missive written by players about something in the game, even when we're pissed off. Facebook, we did the same thing. Sixty-four comments, sixty-four likes, eighty-five comments, all over the place. We have had multiple news coverage of the sale and why everybody's mad 
It's been an MMORPG, two different articles in Massively Overpowered talking about how bad this is. This is as close to unanimous as you're going to see in terms of player sentiment. Yes, there are obviously people who like this and will buy it. Yes, there are obviously people who will apologize for anything CCP does because that's what they do. But the average person playing this game looks at this and says, you've gone too far. And like we said in our letter, please stop the sale and don't do it again. And even if you want, all you got to do, drop the cost by a buck. Take the fitted retriever out and sell that pack, and it'll be the same thing as the destroyer pack that you're already selling that doesn't include a ship, and everybody will be fine with it. All they have to do is just say, we made a mistake. We're not going to do that again. Now, granted, even if they say that, are you going to trust them with that, Merc? I am so glad that you <laughs> asked me that. Listen. Here's the thing, kids. This may seem really silly in the context of a simple mining barge in a pack. This is, however, the perfect storm situation and highly alarming to anyone who's paying attention. First and foremost, I think their silence so far is completely deafening in what it says. I don't know if they're, they're making enough money that they're like, you know what? Fuck it. The entire game is saying rubbing our noses in the hot shit we just laid down on the carpet, but you know what? We made a couple bucks. We're at the point of EVE Online as a video game where you as a customer are getting the squeeze. And no, it's not the good kind of squeeze. This is the bad kind of squeeze. This is where a gaming company has lost its way. So they're just thinking to themselves, what else can we monetize that won't make the entire player base tell us to fuck off and leave? We are at one of those moments. You mentioned a little bit earlier, patches. This is a gaming company that cannot even release a patch anymore. They are developmentally challenged right now. We had to do like, oh, you know, we got this term quadrants. We, we got to do, we got to get rid of quadrants. No, the problem is not that we can't actually fucking develop anything that's not broken. The problem is we're sick of disappointing people by the fact that we can't fucking do our jobs and get a good product out there for you people to play. It is the most grotesque overreach by the company. And it's a situation where they didn't talk to the fucking CSM about it because we would have said, what the fuck is wrong with you? How dare you do this when you don't want to hear the news that somebody's got to say just don't even listen right don't even ask let's just go completely around it i don't want to hear the bad feedback so i'm not going to do this anyway let's think about where we are in the game and what is going to be coming to a future near you very very soon they had a problem capital proliferation there's too many fucking capitals in the game how did they fix that not by creating things for capitals to do or creating situations where those capitals are engaged. No, 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 my friends. They just made it so it's impossible to build capitals. Why? They can't develop shit. If you need like a one change to a zero, sure, they're your guys. If you need actual meaningful change, a good change that excites the player base, I mean, you may get one, but we're going to forget the skill books. Those five bug reports that came in two weeks before we hit the fucking launch button on the patch, we're just going to fucking ignore them because we can't do anything right anymore. The only thing we can do right is this marketing money grab bullshit. So what's going to happen, kids? They're not going to fix fucking capital manufacturing. They're just going to sell you capitals now. They're going to take the easy way out. You know why? Because a marketing guy can shit that out in two hours instead of developers ha having to spend days, hours, weeks, et cetera, coming up with creative and novel ideas to fix their stupid, broken fucking game. It's absolutely infuriating. If you're not pissed off, don't worry. I'll be pissed off for you. This is just so repulsive, skeevy, greedy 
learn how to read the fucking room, would you? I mean, did you not see what he just showed you related to how the players feel about what you're doing? You can't even do the simplest thing we've asked you to do right. Get the fuck out of the way. Make a space game. Stay out of the way. Nothing else. This is if Australia had like dealt with the cane toad problem by just moving to New Zealand right? Let's go live there instead. They don't have fucking cane toads there. These people cannot fix their own problems. They cannot keep any kind of cadence developmentally. We come to them, we tell them fix X, fix Y, fix Z. And they're like, let's sell A, sell B, sell C. Well, that's not what we asked for kids. And you're fucking up. I am completely disgusted. I don't know this fucking company anymore. Yes. I used to have a couple friends there, but I don't know if I still do anymore, but it is a repulsive thing that's going on. The biggest problem, this was somebody's idea in that building. Some person that they're listening to thought this shit up, puked it up on a meeting room table and a bunch of syncophants went, oh, bravo, what a great idea that is. This is gonna be wonderful. And despite us saying very, very clearly, don't do this. Don't go here. Don't pass go. They're just like, oh, la, 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 la. oh we did. you know, the CSM didn't have a comment on this one. So we just went ahead and did it. That's because he didn't fucking tell us about it. So um, we are in an era of plex parity kids, where as long as you've got a credit card, you can have anything you want in EVE Online. This is a fundamentally broken game now. And I am so terrified. The marketing people are going to win. They don't have enough developers. They can't do anything right. It seems like anymore. So we're just in a situation where hang the fuck on and let's hope the marketing people come up with some clever ways for us to swipe those cards a couple extra times. I'm done giving them goddamn money. I'm fucking sick of it. I'm not calling for unsubs or any of that bullshit. If you have fun in this stupid game with your friends, keep logging in. I'm going to because I've got enough pals in there that it's still fun for me to goof around with. But holy shit, get your fucking heads on straight. Listen to your fucking player base. Develop a goddamn spaceship game that doesn't suck shit and stop trying to give us the squeeze like we're too fucking stupid to realize it. Thank you. So I'm just a little confused about how what got what started this whole thing was that apparently the economy was broken. But the economy, I remember, like ships were being built, ships were being flown, ships were dying. People were in space. Too many people were in space. And now we've had we're in uh, on year three of of an actually broken economy where there are no capital ships being built. The everything, the whole thing is still totally fucked. And when is it going to be fixed? I don't know. And this whole this whole thing with the the retriever it it scares me. You know, there's the the Eve is dying meme as as old as Eve. But in it, I have played a lot of games in the past that have died, and you they follow a very specific pattern. When that happens, and one of the th- one of the key signs that the end is near is when it goes into maintenance mode. That is where they, yes, they still have like a, a developer, maybe a couple of developers. They're occasionally fixing bugs, occasionally making a little change here and there, but there's no real development going on anymore. And but they still want money, and they still want more money. So instead of adding things to the game that people will throw more money at, like skins. But skins take work. Skins have to have somebody over there at CCP making them, publishing them. And what we're seeing coming out of CCP now are monetization ideas that don't require any effort. And so what I see this, like, and we're seeing this already with the development side, which Merck touched on, CCP can't build anything anymore. They can change database values easily, but we're not seeing like significant new features. We're not seeing, they can't even make new ships anymore. And we're just, they're not able to do the development. This is in maintenance mode. This is, so they don't, they're in a place where they're trying to make more money, but without having to spend development time on it. And so like what crazy things can they do that they can, squeeze more money out of the player base without having to actually develop anything. 
And, and that's what is, I find the most frustrating, Nam. Yeah, and and this you is, hit it. This is what the this is what a game looks like when it's in its final years, where it's it's the lights are on because it's making enough money to keep the servers running. But as soon as that changes, like it's just going to be in a slow decline because there's nothing new. Eventually you'll get to the point where the, the income no longer justifies and the servers get shut down. And the point that Nam is making is critical. They're acting like the game is in maintenance mode. But that's not what they're telling us. And that's not what the numbers show. And this is what frustrates me more than anything. If you talk to the CEO, if you talk to folks, if you watch them and, and listen to them on their TV stream, on their on their Twitch streams, or you read the interviews that they're doing in the gaming media, CCP's doing great. The company's making money. They have more developers now than they've ever had before. They have more people working on the Eve IP than they ever had before. Even back in the good old days of 2011, but the reality is we're not seeing that because a lot of the stuff that they're doing is back-end stuff. Well, at the same time, you can't be working on the back-end of the game and then also spending most of the last two years trying to get new players in the game and then tell us, oh, well, you know, you got to eat. We got to do more monetization because we need to make money. I want to show you this. This, this, is, this is legitimate, okay? I pulled all the numbers Wrong screen. I pulled all the numbers every year of Pearl Abyss's revenue from EVE Online since the company was bought. CCP was bought by Pearl Abyss in 2018. Look at this, okay? The number here in light blue is the amount of money that is generated by the EVE IP for Pearl Abyss. 12.8 billion won in the first quarter of 2018. 14.9 was the most that they made in the first year, okay? Second year. Second year numbers. Similar, 12.4, 14.3, but then Eve Echoes launches and it jumps up to 18.9. 21.3, the best quarter in EVE since the company bought was bought. Third quarter, 2020. 19.1 here. Okay. So you're you're they're they were making after Echoes millions of dollars more per quarter than they had been when the company was first bought by Pearl Abyss. Now, the last year, it's been rough. Lots of complaints. People have been complaining about, you know, all the different stuff that's going on in the game and how Eve is dying and, and people are unsubbing and all this other kind of stuff. Last quarter, 18.4. Still bigger than every quarter until the launch of Eve Echoes. 18.8, 18.1, 17.6, 19.1. These numbers are all good. CCP generates between 15 and 17 million dollars a quarter every quarter and they have since echoes launched this company is not dying they are not broke they do not need to monetize in this way to keep the lights on this was not a desperation move and that's the biggest issue this was not a desperation move they didn't have to do it when I, I'll tell you what I think desperation mode is going to look like. That's when we're finally going to get the stuff that we asked for. That's when you're going to see $25 cat ears in the game. That's when you're going to see, finally, after all the times we've asked, alliance skins, structure skins, all the different skins that we asked for, that people would pay tons of money. Goon Swarm alone, 36,000 characters you put a $5 pack with a Goon Swarm B on a ship in the game, you're going to ship 36,000 units in a minute. The amount of money that has been left on the table in terms of existing good, okay-style monetization is staggering. And you cannot tell me that the amount of money that they make off of that, off of that customization, if we got it, would not fully pay for whatever design time it takes to implement it. 
And no, it's not as easy as selling a shit fit retriever for $25 on one morning because you woke up and said it was a good idea. But you know what? It's not going to piss off your player base. It's giving them what they want. Now, I've heard a lot of bad arguments about why this is not a big deal and why we shouldn't care. First, oh, it's just a retriever. Well, yeah, and we've heard that before. Oh, it's just a destroyer. Oh, it's just a skill extractor. Oh, it's just counts. Oh, it's just plex. It's not a big deal. Everything will be, they're not going to go that far. They're not going to cross that line. The one consistent thing that we have found with this company is the promises that they make last only as long as the person who made them is at the company. And when they're gone, the gloves are off. When Seagull, CCP Seagull says we're never going to sell skill injectors, we're never going to directly sell skill points, that lasted until she left. And then they did. And so even if they were to come out tomorrow and say, we're never going to cross this line, we're not going to sell any more ships, we promise, they already did it. And five years from now, or a year from now, or two years from now, when the people are at the top are different, or the people in the marketing department are different, they're not going to know the promises that were made. And they're going to go ahead and do this anyway. Because, hey... I didn't I didn't make that promise. I shouldn't well, have I I, you can't be held to that. I don't think the promises are hugely important. Like it doesn't matter whether or not CCP has promised whether that they're never going to do this. The line is still there and it's still a do, a do not cross line. You know, whether or not CCP has acknowledged the line, that's an um, that's kind of unrelated. It's still there. Here's the scary part. Look at what the last couple years have been like with this game. I don't know about you, but I would say awful is an adjective that I think is totally and completely fair to describe scarcity and famine and all this stupid ham fisted bullshit that they've been spinning their wheels with now only to look at the new content we're excited about. It's undoing the dumb shit they've been doing for the last two years. So Player numbers are about as tragic as they could possibly get. Activity in space is about as tragic as it could possibly get. The game is in the worst state it has ever been in, in the time that at least the three of us have been playing. Have they fixed some things? Is tie-dye better during a big giant fight? Sure, man. Give them credit. They got a couple things right. But has this been an absolutely god-awful year where all you watched was your friends in Discord talking about how many accounts they unsubbed today? It was awful. You, on the CSM, believe it or not, we're their biggest cheerleaders. This job's fucking easy when they're getting it right, which is why it's hard 99% of the time. And they have to put in term limits because we get so fucking sick of eating shit on their behalf that they got to go find some new person to come in that's going to tell them, you guys are doing such a good job. The game is in the fucking tank right now. It is, we are in such a precarious position and I'm terrified and horrified that the people that are making the decisions there don't even understand why what they're doing is not rolling out the hits, baby. It's all trash, dumpster, kin, bullshit. Until we stop listening to those people, until we start empowering developers that are actual players of the game that understand what it is that's important to all of us, until they get to a point where, oh my God, I'm going to say something controversial, they can release good features that aren't completely fucked up, we're in trouble. It's going to be a bumpy ride. It's like that goddamn mine cart thing in fucking Indiana Jones. And I just have a feeling <laughs> we're going to be sailing off into the abyss at any minute here. And I'm going to be screaming all the fucking while because we've seen this coming the entire time. Why can't they see that? Why have they not pulled this pack? Why have they not said a once every 10 year event has transpired? Clearly the players are furious about what we have done. Let's undo it. Why is it fucking crickets? coming out of Reykjavik right now. I am so curious. And at the same time, I don't want to know, you know, I don't want to know either. Cause I'll tell you what I think it is. I'll tell you what I think it is. I think they're basically saying, fuck the CSM, screw the veteran players. We don't care about them. That's that you guys, we already got your money. Our concern now is new players. We're going to do everything we can to make life easier for new players 
And we're going to do it in such a way that we make money off of it, too. And if you look and see, they have been doing this for a while. The last two making... years, the EVE Academy, the new player experience that they've redone, they just they did redid the main thing, then they did a big relaunch, did all kinds of marketing around it. They started selling these packs to the new players. They created the expert systems. All of this stuff has been targeted at new players. And again, this is being sold. The main thing they're going to tell people, and it's been put out here, oh, this is for new players. You can only buy it one time, and it's designed for new players, and we want to help new players and make things easier for new players. And, you know, all this the whole thing. Oh, uh, you know, we should we should we should do everything we can to keep new players in the game. And if they don't get to a corporation or they're, they're not if they don't understand what they're doing in the game, we're making it easy for them so they can get out there and have fun. Guys. The number one thing you need to do to help new players is guide them to a player corp where they can meet other e players that can fill the gaps in with the stuff that you don't tell everyone like, hey, guys, anybody got a retriever fit? There you go. Oh, by the way. Hey, you know what? I got an extra one. Let me give it to you. That is better than selling. I mean, the old the old adage of teach a man to fish, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a life. They're not even doing that. It's sell a man a fish. You're not giving them anything. So in the end, you're not being altruistic. You're being greedy. This is not how you help new players. You want to help new players? You want to give them a retriever? Give it to them. Make it the final mission reward for the NPE mining thing. Period. And then there's all kinds of other stuff that they're talking about. And players keep bringing up that they, well, maybe they could make this better if they like, if they bought the ships off the market from players. And that's how they gave it to the new players. You really think that that's going to work? Let's add some complexity to a company that can't get from A to B without getting fucking lost halfway there. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds great. We don't have the time to develop anything the game actually needs. Let's come up with a fucking sophisticated system that allows us to further monetize. That's exactly what we're looking for there, Chucky. Because right. that's, well, are... that's not going to get completely gamed. You're not going to see people putting in fake buy orders. You're not going to see right. the price of retrievers now pegged to whatever the NPC buy order is. Where are they going to buy them? Are they going to buy them in Jita? Jita price on a retriever right now is 50 million is. You know how much it costs in 1DQ? 45. Are they going to buy them out of 1DQ? Well, there you're just handing money to the dull suckers again. There's no way for them to win with this. And again, it is it represents the government as CCP is in, in the EVE universe. They are the government. They are the central bank. They are the ones with their fingers on all the buttons. They spent the last two years putting in all these new levers so that they could fix the economy on the fly by just tinkering with numbers. When everything is, is going poorly, they can juice it, like lowering interest rates, or they can, they, can, they can pull it back when it gets too hot, like reducing the amount of money you get from bounties or whatever. They can do all these things. And now, not only that, they're setting up the company store to sell stuff to players directly that competes with in-game stuff. It's not okay. It is a direct refusal to acknowledge one of the key selling points in EVE Online since 2003, which is the player-run economy. I mean, they highlight, I'll show you guys, they highlighted this in, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in the announcement. This, this is the announcement thread this is the announcement press release for EVE Online, April 23rd, 2003, okay? Look at this, right here. Large scale economy, everything that can be bought in EVE is manufactured in specialized space stations using a variety of raw materials. Activities such as mining, selling, and transporting raw materials as well as manufacturing products are core components, core components of EVE's economic system, trade and commerce can take place in global markets or directly between players. This was what they put in the game that made it unique. And now it's like every other fucking MMO where you buy a gold bit off of an NPC vendor for cash. That's not okay. That's not EVE Online. It is a core principle and you took a sledgehammer to it. That's why we're mad. That's why we're yelling. That's why people are getting upset and telling you that you're doing the wrong thing. And Let the problem is there is Chris. no good way for the players beyond yelling to express themselves to you in a manner that you understand. I mean, 
we always talk about, I always get asked, Brisk, why don't all the CSM quit? Because they'll just put 10 more people on there who will tell them the same thing that we're telling them, and they'll ignore them too. Well, shouldn't we all just unsub? They don't have metrics that make sense to them about unsubs. So when you unsub in a game where it's free to play and every character counts, and if you have a character that you can log in, you can still play the game even without a subscription because of alphas. If you even log in once, don't even make it into the game. You just make it to the login screen, say, to get your login reward for the day. You're counted as a daily active user. So you can unsub all you want. And how many of us have year-long subscriptions or six-month subscriptions? You unsub, they're not going to notice in the churn. And not only that, a ton of money that they're making from the game is coming from Echoes, and it's coming from the other forms of monetization. So we can say here all day, oh, unsub all your accounts. They won't notice or care. It's not going to fix this, which is why you'll never hear me say that. And you'll never hear me or Mark or Nam or anybody say quit. I don't, well, maybe Nam would, but I'm never going to say quit. Because I want you assholes in space playing with me. Because this is my hobby. I love this game. That's why I give so much of my free time to it. That's why we do these shows. That's why we do Rampage. That's why we do Eve Meets every three months. That's why we are constantly playing this game and telling people about it and trying to get new people to try it and trying to get everybody in here to play and fight together. Because we love this game. We don't want it to die. We want the company to do well, but we want them to do well the right way. This is not that. And you know it because we've been telling you this for 10 fucking years. It's at, not necessary. Look at, I'm just thinking about businesses, right? Like what are some of the most reviled companies in sort of the business space, gaming companies. They, I mean, they, if they're in the news, it's probably bad news, whether it's completely shitty culture, aggressive and, and disgusting monetization, getting into the stupid fucking NFT nonsense and saying their players aren't smart enough to understand why it's a good idea. And you have little CCP out there on an island, literally pointing to these companies and saying, but our peers are doing it. Everybody fucking hates them. Do you not see that? You're pointing to like an ax murderer and being like, I mean, it's nothing worse than what they're doing. Like, are you fucking serious? That's when the plot is so flimsy. They're just counting on you and me being too stupid to see through it. And, and it's, we're in a bad spot now. I, I don't have a lot of faith in them correcting this. I think we may have crossed over the threshold where they can undo this. I'm scared because they can't develop anymore. Like the main thing we count on them for, they can't do. But holy shit, they can run out a new fucking sale every 15 minutes for you guys. It's only going to get worse. So I... I I, I used to be called the nicest player in EVE Online. You motherfuckers lost me, and it's over, Johnny. We're done. So, I, unfortunately, this is how it's going to be. You're forcing my hand at this point. You're forcing Brisk's hand. Inominate was there four years ago anyway, so <laughs> you didn't really have to push him very far. You know, and when you start losing players like us, you need to fucking go look in the mirror and think about what you're doing, why you're doing it, and is it worth it? I hope whatever little pennies have made it to the CCP checking account from this stupid, ill-advised, ridiculous fucking sale were worth all of that. I really am at a loss here. Again because the silence has been deafening from CCP and we don't wanna hear. Let me tell you guys, if there's anybody from CCP watching, and I hope that you are, and I know you know us and we know you and we've had these conversations and you've heard this from us before, but I wanna talk directly to my friends at CCP right now, okay? This is where you're not supposed to go. We have told you this consistently. The CSM has told you this. Players have told you this. This is not the Jeter riots a couple of weeks ago. You can't claim that this is just the Imperium or it's just, oh, there weren't, there weren't 2,000 people shooting the Jeter monument. It was only 1,000. The rest were all done. We're, we're not doing any of that stuff this time because we're not going to give 
you and your apologists the ammo to use against us. What we're going to show you is 29 of the people that were elected by players that you trusted, that worked with you, many for many, many years are saying, stop the sale and don't do it again. Are you going to ignore them? Are you going to ignore nine of the 10 CSM members who all claim this? And even Villy, the one that didn't sign the letter, has gone out publicly saying he does not approve of selling fitted ships for ISK. All of us, this entire CSM, is united in opposition to what you're doing. Congratulations, CCP. You're the only person, the only company, the only thing that could have united Villy and me and Gobbins and Anominate and Merkel Chen on the same issue. We don't agree on anything. If I say the sky is blue, Billy says, well, no, it's really kind of a greenish uh, turquoise. All right? But we were standing arm in arm arguing with the apologists just nights ago, and we're going to keep doing that because you guys are crossing the line, and you don't have to do it. We are fine with you working to help new players. We have sat back and watched as a bulk of the development resources of this game have been poured into new player retention, new player things, new player this, new player that, while veteran core stuff has been nerfed or ignored. We have finally turned the page, we thought, and we were finally getting some progress where the players were getting what they wanted. And now you're giving us another thing that nobody asked for. You do not need to ask yourselves what the players want or what they're willing to buy because we have told you over and over again what the players want. The players have told you over and over again what they want. They want more skins. They want alliance skins. They want structure skins. They want corporation skins. They want more backgrounds for their characters. They want more clothing. They want more cosmetics. They want fucking cat ears. They want angel titans. They want new ships. They want new content. They want new missions. This is not hard. You have a focus. Do you realize the amount of money it would cost any other company, any other gaming company to replicate what the CSM provides you? A 24-hour a day, seven day a week focus group of respected players that have credibility with the community, some of us, that would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to replicate. You get it for a trip to Iceland that we haven't gotten in the last two years. That's it. You don't have to guess. Just ask us, we'll tell you. And if you don't ask us because you don't know what the answer, which you don't, you don't, you think you're not going to like the answer, then don't ask the question. I implore CCP, take a look around, recognize that the players are angry, that this is not just the three of us talking or a couple CSM members, that this represents a significant part of the community. And if anybody out there is telling you that the rest of the community doesn't care, they're not being truthful with you and you should ask them why. Players are mad. Pull the retriever out of this pack. You don't even have to stop selling the pack. Just pull the retriever out. Provide an instru instructions. Do it Eve Academy post. How do you buy a fitted ship? Where do you go to get it? Or just make it easier to buy a contract, buy a fitted ship off contracts in a newbie system, whatever. You don't have to go this route. Fix it. And then tell the players, we're sorry, we fucked up. We have fixed it. You don't have to promise us anything because we're not going to believe you anyway. But if you stop doing what you're doing now, at the very least, this will go away and we can get back to talking about the important things that were completely overshadowed this week because you guys can't get out of your own way. All right, we're near the end of the show. You got 10 extra minutes out of us and a seriously song. You got a Merc rant like we haven't heard in a while. Not bad for one afternoon's work, hey? The last thing I want to leave you guys with is, again, and, and this is because we're not just going to sit here and shit on the company. We're actually going to help them achieve a goal that we all agree with. 
and that is Plex for Good. Plex for Good, starting soon. They are in the process of putting together the Plex for Good campaign. If you want to make a donation, starting now, running through March 22nd, 2022, send Plex in game to CCP Plex for Good. That is a character that it's an account that is operated by CCP. They will match all the donations that we as players make up to $250,000. It's going to go to the, to the UN High Commissioner for Refugees for Ukraine, to UNICEF, the Red Cross, and Doctors Without Borders. All four of those are credible. All four of those will help getting help, especially UNHCR, directly to the folks that are adversely impacted by this war in Ukraine. Please, if you're mad about everything that you're doing and you want to send a message, the best way to do that is to keep yelling. But in the meantime, let's help our brothers and sisters in arms who are having a rough time of it in the Ukraine. Let's go ahead and take advantage of this Plex for Good and get out there and do it. All right. Any last words, Mark Nam, before we get out of here? Yes. Uh, to what friends we have that remain over there in Iceland and at CCP, 100% of what you're seeing today is born from a position of concern for people who really, really care about the game. 100% of it is meant to hopefully put into perspective things that may not seem so awful when you're sitting there in that meeting room and someone's got the whiteboard out in the calculator and we're tabulating potential revenue streams that can be created out of thin air. You guys have got to get your shit together. Much more of this, and it's just, it's going to fall over. We've gotten to a point where I suspect this exercise has become anaerobic, and there is only so long that you guys can continue to completely suck shit before even people like us say, check, please, I'm getting out of here. Please. Listen to your better judgment. Do not let these people up top who have no fucking clue about this game that they are the stewards of continue to have this influence on the game or you're not going to have a place to work anymore. It's just going to all go away, you know, and this goddamn game is going to be candy crush. The next time we wake up, it's going to be fucking Fortnite. It's going to be some of that other trash that players of Eve online make fun of because we have been sequestered in an amazing place for so long. And that's all we want to get back to give us a good sandbox and get the fuck out of the way. And we will handle the rest. I hope the message is received because the message is authentic. There is no hyperbole here. Really, really feel this way. And I think given the positions that we are as players where I am accountable and responsible for tens of thousands of people who put me here every year, you can believe it when I say we're not full of shit here and I'm not just screaming at you for my own fucking health. Please fix it. Nah. Yeah, I mean, right now the player base is loud. We're angry. And I'm sure for the people at CCP, that's uncomfortable. But we're we're loud, we're angry because we still give a shit about the game. We still want to play it, we still want it to be a good game, and we still want to see it get better. But one of these times, you guys are going to do something, and the player base is not going to get mad. You're going to get silence. And, and that silence away. will not be acceptance. That will be the lack of a player base. A play, having customers is not a God-given right. Correct. All right, last two things. Last two things. I'm going to pull this back up because I want to make sure I did. I forgot to mention this before, but I want to do this now. In addition to Plex for Good, next Saturday, March 19th, 1900 Eve, our dear friend Dark Shines of the Initiative has put together a battleship brawl for Plex for Good. Get out there. Come hang out. We're going to do a big event. We're all going to hang out there. We're going to fight. And it'll all be to 
increase awareness and get everybody to get out there to do Plex for Good. So please get out here March 19th. The information is on Reddit. You can also ask Shines. It'll be an oh shit in curse or uh, in catch the oh shit system. Our favorite oh shit tech A. It is right near Sendaya and Kebbers, high second, low sec entrances. Very easy to get to. So we're going to see you out there. And then the second thing is happy St. Patrick's Day on Thursday to all of our friends around the world, especially my boy Dark Shines and the rest of uh, the Irish and Irish ancestry people like myself. Go out there. Do not drink green beer. Drink Guinness or something good. And for all of us here at the Meta Show, myself, Mark, Nam, Mittens out there on assignment moving. Thank you all for joining us. Today has been the Meta Show for March the 12th, 2022. We'll see you next time. I'm going to go ahead and play the Seriously song because Jay Amazing is ass and he's our producer and he tells me what to do. So I do it. We're going to play the Seriously song. Then we're going to do the outro and we will see you next time on the Meta Show. You stay classy, New Eden. When I done is too busy and the tannies a bit too much. They call on me by name, you see, for my special songs. To the goons, I'm seriously, to KF, I'm lucky. But call me by any name, anyway, it's all the same. I'm the bubble on your path, I'm the sino on your roar, I'm the titan with a lance, the super on every gate. The shuttle that you missed I'm the miner that just left I'm the thread that arrived That laughs as you die And it's so easy when your goons war This is the game we choose Merc tips his hat to me I do it all because I'm goons war And I do it all for free Your tears are all the pain I'll ever need Redditors to make sad While there's posting to be had While there's a lion's left to kill While there's puppy left to chase around I'll be there, I'll be waiting In your local, it's a game I'm glad I'm in it Cause one quits every minute And it's so easy when your goons warm This is the game we choose Brisk tips his hat to me I do it all because I'm goons Your tears are all the pain I'll ever need I pledge my allegiance To always post And I promise on my very soul To do as the state told The emperor has never seen They fear I'm the ganker in your belt I'm the dagger in your back The liquid log from your pack I'm the quickening of your pulse A sudden pain, a sudden betrayal And it's so easy when your goons warm This is the game we choose CP tipped his hat to me I do it all because I'm goons warm And I do it all for free Your tears are all the pay I'll ever need For free, your tears are all the pain I'll ever need And I do it all for free Your tears are all the pain I'll ever need Get so lonely being goons warm What I'll do to be nice even for a little while and no one loves
Bless you when your goons swarm I'm lying through my teeth Your tears are all the company I'll ever need 